We have some beautiful property here. Just kind of foraging in the woods and found this stick today. We hear in the gospel, or the second reading, that we are called to stir into flame the gifts that God has given to us. To stir into flame the gifts that God has given to us. That means that we have some obligation and have to take some action in our lives for the Holy Spirit and the gifts to work in our lives. We have to do something to stir these gifts into flame. So that's what I'm going to talk about today is how do we do that? How do we stir these gifts into flame? First, it's very important that you realize that when you were baptized, you were given a candle, and probably one of your godparents held the candle, and the priest said, receive the light of Christ, and then gave you, you or your godparents the candle. And then after that, he said, may this candle be kept burning brightly, free from sin. So that was the, the prayer that was said, may this candle be kept burning brightly. Now that candle is carried with you, it's symbolic of the light of Christ that is carried with you all throughout your life until you end up right here at your funeral. And at your funeral, in front of the candle is the Paschal candle, the Easter candle. That candle leads you through all of your life. But there's something even deeper that we have in us that was given to us at our baptism. A candle can be blown out, right? Well, there's something that when we were baptized and we were baptized into Christ, we were given this fire in our, in our hearts where we get the sacred heart from. We were given this fire. Now, a fire does need to be tended. When a fire goes out, all you have are the embers. But here's the thing. Even if your fire goes out in life from times to time, there will always be an ember deep within you that never goes out. And so never get discouraged if you find your life not on fire or you feel like you don't have that flame alive in your heart. That ember is still there. But it needs to be stirred. And it needs to be stirred into flame. So today I would like to talk about some practical ways to do that. So in the mass series I have the, the first uh, one that we have is what I call the five P's of prayer. And so this has not only to do with the mass, but also in your life, many ways that you could stir into flame those gifts that God has given to you. The first P of prayer is preparation. And what that means is that we prepare to experience God in some way. When a couple gets married, they prepare for the wedding, and they also prepare for their honeymoon. So they know what they're going to do right after they get married. The same is true for us in our lives, that when we want to experience God, we prepare for that. So they used to say to us in the seminary that if you come to Mass on time, you're late. And the idea is we come early to prepare ourselves. And especially in this parish, some of that preparation is just talking to the body of Christ that is gathered around you. But we also have the chapel where you could go and pray for a few moments. And I love that before every Mass, we have that moment of silence where we allow ourselves just to be prepared for Mass. So every Sunday, we can do some kind of preparation. Now, the church has a long-standing tradition of one way of preparation is fasting. So we fast one hour before receiving the Eucharist. We do this so that we can in some way prepare ourselves to receive the Eucharist at Mass. But as we go through this Mass series, there's going to be a lot of different parts of the Mass, whether it be the prayer at the beginning where you bring your heart and offer yourself, or whether it be the penitential rite where you ask God for forgiveness of sins. We have to come to Mass prepared for it, because if we're not, the Mass just happens really quick, and uh, we haven't actually entered into it or engaged it. So in our lives, too, outside of Mass, there has to be preparation for stirring that fire. And I want you to think about your heart right now, or your, your, your um, coals in there. Are they burning? Are they hot? Are you on fire? What's that like right now? Does it need to be stirred up in some way? And if it needs to be stirred up in some way, you got to do some preparation. So we have to think about, okay, God, what can I do to help stir my heart back into fire? And this preparation could be just thinking about that. You know, maybe it's um, increasing your prayer. 
Maybe it's making some kind of retreat. Maybe it's spending some time in Eucharistic adoration. Maybe it's going to confession. You prepare just by thinking about that. Maybe it's just preparing for Mass and saying, Lord, when I come to Mass this Sunday, could you please set my heart on fire? So we do some preparation. There was a Jesuit priest, Father Bob Welsh, who I made a retreat with, my first eight-day retreat. And he talked about this preparation in terms of a couple. He said, prayer is like this. So if you're going to spend some, some time in prayer during the day, you think about it ahead of time. When am I going to pray? You kind of plan it, you know, so you plan your day so that prayer fits somewhere in there. But not only do you prepare by picking a time, you think beforehand about what you're going to pray with. Because if you just go to prayer without preparation, you're, you might spend that whole time, like, flipping through the Bible or trying to find a spiritual book or, you know, thinking about what you're going to do. He said we should spend some time preparing. Now, myself, I like to, during, during my holy hours, my ideal holy hours before the Blessed Sacrament, praying with Scripture and, and having a passage, usually the Sunday reading or one of the daily readings. But what I found is if I, pray, if I prepare with that reading earlier on in the day, then I'm thinking about it all day so that when I go to pray, I just enter into it more naturally and beautifully. The analogy he used is a couple, that they're married, they have kids, the husband's going off to work, but they got a babysitter that night. They're going to have a good time out and a good time when they come back. And uh, in the morning, as the husband's leaving for work, he just simply looks at his wife and he says, I can't wait for tonight. And they give each other a kiss, and he goes off to work. What do you think that guy's thinking about all day, coming back to his wife that evening? So that's what preparation is for us. It's a preparing for this encounter with God. The second P is place, that we have a place that we can go to to pray. We're blessed to have this beautiful church. I know it used to be a school building, and now we get to be in this beautiful church. This is our place to pray. And just knowing that we have a place to go to to pray helps stir that flame and facilitate the encounter with God. So we have this place for Mass on Sunday, but I think it's important that you all have a place that you can pray on your own. If you don't know the code to get in here, you can come here anytime and pray before the Blessed Sacrament. But sometimes if you can't get to church, do you have a place in your home that you can pray? Traditionally, that's been like a, um, an altar for some families or having a prayer chair or a prayer corner. Um, so even in the rectory, I have a prayer chair that I love to sit in and I have icons around that. My Bible's right next to it. I light a candle. I have a place to go to to pray. 90% of praying and stirring that flame is just going to the place. It's like going to the gym. If you go to the gym, you're probably going to work out. But if you don't go to that place, it's not going to happen. And so that's why it's so important that we gather in this place every Sunday as the body of Christ. This is our sacred place to pray. The third is posture. So what, what we do with our bodies actually helps us encounter God. So during the Mass, traditionally, we stand in awe before the gospel. We kneel before the consecration. Um, we sit when we're receiving and, and, and hearing God's word. And then the fourth traditional type of prayer is prostration, where we lay on the floor. And I like to do that before the Blessed Sacrament too. Lay our, lay our whole bodies on the floor and give ourselves to God. It's a very powerful form of surrender. I had a wise spiritual priest, Father McCreary, once say to me that if you're ever doubting God and feel like you can't pray, just get on your knees. And the very act of kneeling down is going to help us realize with our body and humble ourselves to pray before God. The fourth is presence. So to realize that we are in the presence of God. During the Eucharist, we encounter him in four ways. The gathered assembly that I talked about before. So you are, and we are, the body of Christ. So just our being here together helps us realize God's presence. The next would be hearing the word of God. We hear the word of God in sacred scriptures. So every single word that comes from the scriptures, from the Psalms, from the Eucharistic prayer is God speaking to us. The third is from the priest. So as, as a priest, I stand in the person of Christ, in persona Christi, and I'm, and, and I'm here. And then finally, and most importantly, in the Eucharist. So at the consecration and when we receive the body of Christ, we experience him. So there's so many ways to be present and to experience God at Mass. And then finally is passage. 
if you were praying at home, to pray with your scripture passage or to pray with nature. But when we're at Mass, to listen to the word of God. And passage means to pass from life into death, to pass to the other realm. So when we come to Mass, we're passing into heaven. So tend to your hearts. Realize that our hearts do need to be stirred from time to time and to be stirred into flame. How is your heart? Is it on fire or is it an ember? But I invite you today to find one way to practically do something to stir it into flame.